Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night, early Friday evening here. Well, late afternoon, 5.14 p.m. California time, April 25th, 2025 is the date. A lot of 25s in there. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.3 earthquake across Alaska. Also, a little bit of further movement down south there along the Aleutian Trench uh, with some earthquake activity ramping up here earlier with a, a four-pointer or so. Been quite active out here across the Aleutian Trench here recently. Kind of keeping an eye on that region. Uh, still got a, a big time swarm out here around the Turkey area. Notice a lot of twos, threes, and fours out there around the Mara Mara area. I believe that's correct. I, I double checked it. <laughs> Mara Mara, right? No, Mara Mara. That is it. There we go. And just sometimes these pronunciations here are, are kind of fun. Mara Mara. There we go. A lot of earthquake activity happening out there. Uh, that system is uh, very close to the Anatolian plate, if not on it, that sits over here, a strike slip boundary. Here's the uh, northern portion of it. And as you can see, the uh, darker arrows here indicating some strike slip boundary on that fault system. There is a potential out there of seeing maybe some larger movement there in the Sea of Marmara area, where the 6.2 earthquake struck just a couple days ago. Uh, if you can imagine here along this plate boundary, let me bring this up here a little bit. Uh, well, it's not going to show localized faults, but there's that North Anatolian fault that runs up here. Right in this area where the 7.6 struck here back in 1999. Pretty big earthquake out there. And uh, again, this area of that plate boundary or the um, fault system, system can definitely see some larger activity. So 1999, seven-pointer. 1912, a 7.2. That kind of puts this area here in the middle boundary, right? In terms of uh, maybe seeing some larger activity. Now, there is no guarantee, but with the amount of aftershock activity that is, is occurring, even one as we speak right now, 3.3, uh, it's possible that we could be looking at something larger uh, about ready to brew or pop here in this area. Now, far as the aftershock sequences go, we'll just check the USGS here. See what they have. You know, the Earthquake 3D globe obviously loaded with a lot of earthquakes. These guys showing a, a number of fives and a couple of fours in there with the latest somewhat decent magnitude of a 4.3 this morning. But as you can see here, there's much more happening in that general area. So keep an eye on the Sea of Marmara area. That's definitely uh, showing a lot of elevated activity right now. And some large scale movement has taken place there historically. 4.2, newer earthquake right now, just off the coast of Japan. Been pretty quiet out there uh, pretty much all day. Let's go ahead and check out the last 24 hours here over around Japan. Uh, USGS not reporting that earthquake yet, but you notice the absence of earthquakes there across the map. 4.2 looks like uh, right around the Japan trench area. Might be seeing things about ready to ramp up here. Keep an eye on the Taiwan area northeastward here along that plate boundary. That includes the Nankai Trough and the Kuro Kamchatka Trench up here. Uh, got some major potential for some larger activity here. I feel it's going to happen soon. I'm thinking one of those areas is where we're going to see our next 8-pointer. Should be coming up. 5-pointer out here around Papua New Guinea. Some deeper activity once again around the Indonesia Islands area and the Java Trench over here. Got a uh, pretty good cluster of movement there. New Zealand, nothing new to report since this morning's update. Low 3.4 underneath North Island. Uh, but looks like things are starting to move around and shuffle around a little bit more uh, across certain regions here of the northern Pacific Plate. Uh, California out here. Let's go ahead and check out the west coast, see what we got going on. Uh, one more earthquake out in Nevada, near mine in Nevada, 2.9. Uh, that's above the 2.5 threshold. Uh, looks like a little spotty 1.7 out there further to the west. Far as Southern California goes, just a few microquakes out here today. But, again, when things are in motion out here, things starting to shuffle around a little bit, that's when uh, we could see some uptick out here across the west coast. A couple earthquakes there from uh, yesterday and today. The latest of 2.7, northern California area. Washington up here seeing a little bit of notable earthquake up here around the area starting to kick up out here. Uh, some from yesterday, a little bit from today. This little swarming up here 
near Loomis, Washington, off 97, has been quite active out here in the last couple weeks with about 53 earthquakes and really no main quake to uh, you know associate these uh, these there's no aftershocks there's you know who knows if they're foreshocks just a little swarm of activity with no parent earthquake so to speak uh, number of threes number of twos down south here off 97 a number of years ago there's some larger activity in the upper six range so I'm um, wondering if that's what we're going to see here. Maybe some larger activity in that region because it's just quite, you know, a little odd to have a bunch of earthquake activity and no main sequent event, no sequence events there. Uh, a little bit of movement around Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. One lonesome earthquake here, 17 miles deep into the Cascadia subduction zone for a 1.1 late last night. The oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling out there. Seen a number of tornadoes out here in Texas again. Getting it, getting it done, I guess. It is severe weather season, so uh, Texas knows how to do it properly, I guess. I don't know if that's the right wording for it, but hey, it's uh, you got to be on guard out there during this time of year. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench, a little bit of activity stirring up here in the three range. Uh, let's see what we got. Latest one shows a 3.0, just north of San Juan. Keep an eye on that area. The Puerto Rico Trench has some uh, ability there to produce some big earthquakes as well. Uh, near the Ecuador area, that is uh, so far the biggest earthquake in the last 24 hours, the 6.3. Not a whole lot of aftershock sequences there uh, following that six-pointer. There's some working its way down south here, some newer movement along the Peru-Chile Trench here, roughly about in this area. Uh, so we got to watch this area because a lot of times during these big events, kind of watch a little pattern of unzipping here. It's a major subduction zone, very link lengthy. If I show you guys the oceanic crust view uh, up here around the Colombian Trench, Ecuador Trench, into the Peru-Chile Trench, it's a huge subduction zone, and uh, the slip rate up here is quite high. Uh, I don't recall exactly what it is. Roughly, um, at least in the center part, 79 mm per year. So this could obviously be um, variable as far as increasing or a little bit less uh, slip rate out there. Either way. It's a major subduction zone, and we do see uh, occasional unzipping of that uh, area. So keep an eye on that. Definitely showing some newer activity here south of uh, the 6.3 that struck this morning. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, there's that 3.3 out there in the uh, Turkey area. Aside from that, uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, the space weather activity. See if anything's going on here. The sun... It does have a, a number of sunspots out there, but look at it. We are just barely, I, I think we're actually in the B flare right now. B, wow, B 8.9. That's crazy. And, you know, if you think about it here, there's a number of sunspots. If you had, if you had your teles, uh, solar telescope out, right, you have to have a nice solar lens, uh, you would see a lot of these sunspots that are currently facing Earth, but I tell you what, there's not a whole lot of uh, magnetically complex ones out here. Pretty quiet. So the forecast here for any solar flaring will remain low for the foreseeable future. I don't see anything back here. Even this area is starting to die off. I don't see any newer sunspots out here that have popped up out of the blue. Everything looks stable. Nothing major in the aurora forecast either. Look at that. Pretty quiet conditions prevailing. As far as the far side watch, see if they got this fixed yet. No, it still looks like it's on the uh, from the 19th, six days ago. That doesn't help us out much whatsoever. So hopefully there's someone at the Stanford Education there department uh, can get this up and running here. It's kind of neat to see what's going on on the far side of the sun, but uh, five days old is not going to help us. Uh, severe weather continues across the pan, close to the panhandle of Texas today. Look at that enhanced zone, just uh, right around the Lubbock, Texas area. Huge slight risk and marginal risk as well for some tornado activity. It looks like they added that 10% chance in there earlier this afternoon. Uh, some wind and some big Texas hail out there. They uh, definitely can get that hail done. Tomorrow, uh, got a little marginal risk out there. Same area, and uh, as you can see... Things are going to pick up here around day four, day five, with a huge severe weather risk there across that area in the, the uh, orange and the yellow. Day five, that 
extends further south. Uh, either way, it looks like we do have a return of some uh, decent severe weather potential here over the next couple weeks. Here's a weekly run from the 25th to the 1st of May. Notice all those supercell composite parameters way up there in the higher percentage range. Also, that shows there into uh, almost the second week of May, from the 2nd to the 8th of May, uh, typical tornado alley out there, even into the, the third week. So watch out, Texas. If you're in the drought out there, I think uh, I think Texas is okay. Let's go check out the uh, drought conditions, see what's going on out there. Um, across the area for drought. This is the uh, Windy map. Absolutely love windy.com. I uh, pay for the uh, premium version. It's not that much. I think it's a yearly... Uh, fee, but there's so much you can do here. It's an all-in-one weather app. If you're a weather nerd like me, well, yeah, it comes in handy. You can also check volcanoes, SO2 and NO2 emissions, and um, you know maybe where you might want to use a dust mask. Uh, that's dust mask. Texas. Okay, so far as the drought conditions go, there at the surface level. And the uh, deeper regions there, it does look like western areas of Texas out there, pretty dry. That includes the desert southwest region. But I hear monsoonal moisture out there um, coming up this year should get rid of the majority of that drought. Just some of the patterns are showing uh, maybe a, a nice little monsoonal um, pattern out there later. Uh, so a little dry, but uh, man, look at that. They're quite wet out there around Oklahoma mid portion of texas up into kansas as well there's going to be a lot more rain coming up here check out the accumulated rain uh, model graph here this is another cool feature look at that if it's wet now wait here in about a, seven days or so it's going to get wetter so if you got some ponds out there across the beautiful texas landscape well you know if they're empty they're going to fill up and uh, if they're full right now i might want to add a secondary pond somewhere because there's a lot of rain coming out there uh, a lot. So this is uh, runs until the 9th of May. California, Southern California, a little bit of rain. There's a low pressure system coming in tonight. Uh, actually coming in right now. Got rain chances here through the evening and tomorrow as well for the majority of the sta state of California. So that's good. That'll help hopefully limit uh, you know any future fire starts here for at least a little bit, right? But our dry season is coming up on us and all the rain and all the fuel... Right, the tall vegetation that has been built up, that's going to create some major fire concerns here as things start to heat up and dry out for our dry season. Uh, so we'll have to check back on that for fires. Been covering that uh, a lot, unfortunately, last year. Uh, let's see, but yeah, a lot of rain coming in there. You can see that band of moisture coming up from Mexico into the um, Texas and Southern Plains area. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anything... Uh, on the map yet nothing for that japan earthquake kind of interesting there usgs not showing it but uh, whatever a little more a little spotty activity outside of enza down there that's going to be uh the seismograph station here on the bottom so if you're watching the live stream here that station is very close right around this area and that's got to be that one pointer Showed up quite nicely there. That's because it's probably right on top of that seismograph station. Well, right underneath that seismograph station. But aside from that, folks, uh, like I said, we'll just keep an eye on things. Maybe things are shuffling around out here. Uh, it won't stay quiet for long. Have yourself a good Friday evening. I got a, a couple things to do here a little bit later on this evening, so that's why I'm doing just an early update. But, of course, if anything major kicks up here, as we head into the Friday evening, I will obviously cover it. Uh, but for now, just be on guard. A lot of movement up here across Alaska. Um, that should, uh, you know, it's hard to say exactly what's going on here. I mean, it's just a broad scale event. And the general plate motion out here for that area of the Pacific Plate is that subduction zone. But also at the same time, you get that northwestward uh, migration of the Pacific Plate. And that could potentially add that further strain out here. Maybe that's why we're seeing that four-pointer right now across Japan. Uh, we should see things fill in here potentially overnight. I'll just watch that and see how it plays out. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, we'll see you guys out here a little bit later on. Uh, well, tomorrow, unless something major happens uh, this evening, I'll, I'll jump back on 
Take care. Make sure you guys subscribe and uh, appreciate a like on the video. Have a good one.